Keep filming, keep rolling till it fucking dies. The police need to see everything. <laughs> Me? Oh my god. Shit. <laughs> what the fuck happened to you? We need to help Ernie! Darren, let's go! He's not moving. Fuck! Guys! Ernie! Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. The footage you're about to see was found somewhere in the Everglades. It appears to be the uh, Black Grove Psychiatric Asylum. If after the screening you have any questions, I'll be in my office. Your assignments are on the wall outside. Mel, can I see you? Look, Professor, I think I'm... this is what you were waiting for. Thank you, Professor.
This footage was taken six years ago by viral video blogger Brian Reznor. It instantly catapulted him to phenom status. Sadly, this was the last video he'd ever make. When authorities searched for possible clues, they found nothing on- Guys, we got it. We fucking got it. No way, dude. Yes. Fuck yeah. We got one night. All right, guys, let's get moving. Everything okay? Yeah. Good. All right, everybody. This here is our golden ticket. This is the date in which we're gonna be presenting our findings to the committee at the university. And cement our names in history. We're gonna change science forever. Now, just for the sake of record keeping, Let's backtrack a bit and fill everyone in on what we've been trying to do here. There are so many bloggers and wannabes that are trying to prove that ghosts exist, but they have no legitimate scientific evidence to back up any of their claims. I mean, have you ever looked at the footage and asked yourself, is this real? And if it is, is it even possible? My uncle used to always say to me, the proof is in the pudding, Mel. Well, you know what? This group knows their shit when it comes to science. So we have done previous investigations, but for now, let's just call it Investigation 13. We can, in fact, scientifically prove that spirits actually exist, and we can even explain how this happens. But I'm not gonna go into detail until we present everything to the school board. Which is the start, the very first parapsychology course ever. I mean, this could literally revolutionize the way we view ourselves and those on the other side. Now, this is all with the basic intention of answering a few questions like, why are they here? Where do they go? And even, what do they want? I mean, our bodies can literally be nothing but vessels. Do you have any idea what that means? Yeah, we might be able to figure out how to transfer our souls or spirits or what have you and experience the entire universe at the speed of light. It's literally life after death. Now, it goes without saying that this is the very first step. I mean, we have a lot of research to do, but this can very much inspire the youth of today and tomorrow to do something big. This can change our entire world. And we are pioneers of that change. So anyway, let's not be camera hogs here. This isn't about Jared and I, even if Jared would like it to be all about him. Hey. Over on the west side of the room, compiling our footage is Terry. <laughs> And behind the camera is... What are you doing? Good old Nate. Come on, Mel, you know I'm camera shy. Oh, relax. Baba Booey! Shh! Yes, sounds great. We'll see you on Saturday. Uh, thank you so much. Guys, we're in. I mean it! <clears throat> Time for lunch. What? 
I know what you did. Leave me be, mister. You're the kid who... Mommy and Daddy. And I thought I was nuts. I'm not crazy. No, of course not. None of us are. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Stop laughing. <laughs> to the infirmary. As for you, you are coming with me. Let go of me! Let go! What is that? What are you gonna do to me? Settle down now, Mr. Craven. I'm just going to perform a procedure to help you calm down a bit. off in here. He likes the dark. He's like a mole. <laughs> I want the bulbs replaced in here at once. Yes, ma'am. You poor thing. I'm not going to hurt you. That's not a good idea, ma'am. He's not some animal. Get him washed up. How are you feeling, Mr. Craven? Give us some privacy. Ma'am, I strongly advise against it. I'll be fine. You can stay right outside the doors. Seems like it's just you and me. You like it? It's a dream catcher. Filters out all the bad dreams. I love the Native American culture. How about you? No worries. After what the previous administration put you through, I wouldn't blame you for not trusting me. Now that I'm in charge, we're going to do things differently around here. I don't know. After reviewing his past behavior, I don't think it's wise to let him have this much exposure. He can't be rehabilitated if he's kept in that dark cage 24-7. That cage is a reminder of who the crazy ones are. Don't forget it. And it doesn't take much for us to be in there with them. Well, you see, it happened just after sunset. My friend got scammed. Scammed me back. 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 Scammed Mr. Craven. Please! Please, no shock! I'm not going to shock you, sweetie. That treatment is barbaric. It's ineffective. What are you going to do to me, then? Are you familiar with the ways of the shaman? They're known as healers, able to communicate with the spirit realm in other dimensions. I've traveled the world and learned of their ways, and I'm here to free you. 
From what? The evil that is deep inside you. I know you're not evil, Leonard. You want me to help you, Leonard? Very well. Let's begin. Start shooting as soon as we get out. Film everything. Investigation 13 takes place here at the legendary Black Grove Psychiatric Asylum. We're about to meet the building's owner, Miss Layla Parrish. Hi. Jared, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. What's with the camera? Oh. We just use it to document every single step to prove we're not manipulating the environment in any way. I mentioned in the email, along with doing a brief interview. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm. Mm. Cool. Well, again, I'd like to thank you for providing us with this opportunity. Now, no one's been given access to the inside in over five years, correct? That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Except for the occasional one who sneak in here. And no bodies have been found or no signs of foul play. No. So, how many people have disappeared from the premises? Do you mind if we just, uh, talk off the record a little bit? Okay. No cameras. Sure. Shut it off. It's off. What's wrong? Now, <clears throat> before we go any further with this interview, I just wanted to let y'all know I'm not the kind of girl to believe in ghosts. And I sure as hell don't get scared when things go bump in the night. This place has been combed over by the authorities. And aside from a few rodents which have made a home and a whole lot of dust, it's empty. So we have nothing to worry about. Look, I just need the money. Did you bring the 750? Of course. Well, already then. Isn't this the entrance? Those doors are sealed permanently from the inside. There's only one way in. This way. As you can see, due to old wiring, some parts of this building have no power. Oh, this facility is definitely seen better days. 
I understand you're pretty knowledgeable about the building's history. Well, my great-grandfather, Leon Parrish, he was one of the main original investors. And eventually, that's how I came to be the proud owner of this nightmare building. The Black Grove Psychiatric Asylum uh, began operation in the late 1800s. <clears throat> it was originally called the Black Grove Lunatic Asylum. But sometime around 01, 1915, the word lunatic was deemed politically incorrect, so the name was changed to the Black Grove Psychiatric Asylum. But most people still refer to it as a lunatic asylum. Still to this day. So what could you tell us about those early years at the asylum? Well, as I understand, when it opened, it measured just over 200,000 square feet and was originally built to house 300 patients. <clears throat> By 1945, there were well over 1,600 patients residing in the wards. That's nuts. So who were the people that were treated here and what kind of methods did they use? <clears throat> well, from its early stages, the asylum housed um, males and females who were considered mentally ill or insane. Just pleasuring yourself would get you put behind these walls. <laughs> Hell, it was the number one listed cause of insanity. In say day, it was a common place for doctors here to perform lobotomies and to use electroshock therapy to treat their patients. Over the years, the number of deaths occurred within the asylum document to be in the hundreds. Have you ever noticed any of those tragic souls roaming this building, Miss Parrish? No. Now I'd like to show you all where you'll be setting up your equipment. Hmm? This is perfect. Yeah. I thought it would work well for you all. Terry, why don't you stay here and start setting up while Layla gives us the rest of the tour? All right. I got my walkie on if you need anything. Well, Miss Parrish, We saved the best for last. This is where they kept all the most violent and unstable patients. Some of the most horrific incidents occurred on this floor. Oh, this place is incredible. You want Melanie to hold your hand, Nate? <laughs> Shut up, Jared. <laughs> uh. Would this place still be open if it wasn't for Craven? Within 15 years of its closing, things grew more violent. Financial problems, lack of staffing, gave way to abuse of the patient, or physical attack, even murder between patients and staff. But... Indeed. Lana Craven was the last straw. Can you tell us about the legend of the Mole Man? Why don't I show you instead? This here cell, number 363, was Leonard Craven's home. After you. Fine. Grow a pair, boys.
The atmosphere of this room feels different. We need to set up an IR camera in here and I think we should put one out in the hallway. Why was Craven sent to this place? His parents were drug addicts who physically and sexually molested him as a child. He's also thought to be mute. It was just a matter of time before he'd sneak into his parents' bedroom that night. Kill them both. Oh my God. But he didn't stop there. Then he went on to scalp both of his parents with the same knife. Kept the skins. Devil incarnate is what he was. Five oh eight PM. Interview with Layla. You got it? Yeah. Go for it. Okay. We've made our way from the male ward and into the boiler room. It was here where Leonard Craven made his escape. Or so we believe. Layla Parrish is about to show us a point of escape. Miss Parrish, can you please tell us about the night that Leonard Craven disappeared from Black Grove? From what I'm aware of, sometime um, in February of 1976, Leonard um, managed to escape from his cell in the middle of the night. When Leonard was actually discovered missing, the whole building was searched from top to bottom and no trace of him could be found until a nurse went missing during her night shift. Clearly, it was Craven. Well, she was always complaining about her job and staff members thought that she found the perfect opportunity to just skip off and quit. Outsiders speculated that she was in cahoots with Craven. Days later, maintenance workers uh, started complaining about a awful stench that filled the whole damn place. And one of them got to looking around. And uh, he traced it, that smell, to the ventilation shaft, where he discovered the nurse. Craven attacked the worker. And it's believed Craven decided to escape through here. Was Craven's body ever found? <laughs> Girl, have you ever taken a look around this place, hmm? No? Well, it's filled with nothing but gators and panthers, not to mention land that's more like grass growing out of water, making it damn impossible for anyone to travel by foot on. But this, this was the same ventilation shaft where Brian Reznor entered. Is that correct? I'm still involved with legal matters concerning the incident with Mr. Reznor. So I will not comment on any questions asked about him. So the Mole Man escaped through here? Yes. Um, when they found the body of the nurse and the unconscious worker, they also found that the grate was removed. The shaft was open. Amazing. <laughs> Leonard Craven never even left the grounds. <laughs> well, he might have been crazy, but he sure wasn't stupid. But that certainly wasn't the end of the Mole Man, was it? No, hon, it wasn't. It was the end of Leonard Craven and the birth of this Mole Man nonsense. I've done everything that I can to secure this building. But until... These little bastards stop breaking in. This legend will never die. It's like moths to a flame. That's right. Like moths to a flame. Mm. Same thing with legal nightmares. Yeah. <laughs> they go missing. The lawyers come after my wrinkly old ass. Until Brian Reznor. He has created a quagmire for you, hasn't he? Enough, Melanie. She said she can't talk about him. So, Miss Parrish, just for the record, what is your honest opinion on the whole Mole Man phenomenon? 
I don't know. I don't... I don't know what to make of it all. I... I just want to get rid of this place. For good. Miss Parrish, that wraps up the interview. It may take an hour or two for us to unload and set up the rest of our equipment, and we'll be ready for lockdown. Fair enough. You okay? Yeah, whatever. Why, why'd you call me out like that? What do you mean? I mean, you've never treated me like this before. I'm just keeping things professional. Isn't that what you wanted? And calling me out like that is professional? I don't have time for this right now, Melanie. I'm not surprised. You never had time before anyway. You're sure about this? We're good, Miss Parrish. Thanks. Fine, then. i see you at 7 a.m. Thank you, Miss Parrish. You're welcome, home. Settle down. Send your homework to the front. Leonard, did you do your homework? No. That's enough. Stay after class. Turn to page 82 of your textbook. We will be covering percentages. Leonard, I don't know what to do with you anymore. You don't turn in your assignments. You don't participate. I'm worried about you. Should I call your parents in? No, please, don't call my parents. Is everything fine at home? I can only help you if you tell me what is wrong. Fine. I need to see some improvement then. You're dismissed. Hey, Leonard, is that teach gonna call your mommy? Hey, we're talking to you. Thank <laughs> you. 
I know this sounds cliche, guys, but if you check your phone, there's no service. Damn. I wanted to live tweet during the entire investigation. We can post whatever we need to on our way back home tomorrow. All right. Does everybody have walkie-talkies? Good. Everybody got glasses? Put them on. All right, Mel, in the first sweep, I want you and Nate to cover the second floor. I'm taking the vibe cam. Good. Ernie and I are gonna cover the third floor with the mini DV and the flirt, and as usual, Terry's gonna stay behind and watch the monitors and let us know of any unusual activity. Now we all have walkie-talkie, so stay in contact. Terry, if for any reason you decide to get up and start wandering around, <laughs> make sure your glasses are on. And no video games. Yes, Dad. It's gonna be a long night, guys, so make sure you fill up on that O-Prime and get to work. Guys, I'm, I'm thirsty too. Everything is pretty steady down there. So, when we finish up here, there's a great sushi bar I'd like to take you to. You're gonna like this place. That's perfect. And we can even do a wrap-up party there. Good idea. Yeah. We should do that. So, let's go to the library and do an EVP session. Lead the way. It's more hot in here than it is out there. I should have filmed at my dead aunt's place. Well, unless your aunt was notorious for going on killing sprees, he's of no use to us. Craven, however, is going to be the mother load when it comes to evidence. Okay. And? There's not one we've been able to investigate like him. I mean, the negative energy is just ten times more powerful than the positive energy. Well, he never met my aunt. Look. As long as we walk out of here with some proof in the afterlife, and maybe in that afterlife, all we are is balls of energy, I mean, no heaven or hell, can you imagine that? The world's gonna be rocked by that information. Oh, man. This is freaking awesome. Everything's as cold as ice. Shit! A freaking mouse! Two hours in and all we got is a fucking mouse. Eleven thirty-three p.m. Library. EVP session. If there's anyone in here, would you like to talk to us? Tap once for no. Twice for yes. Play the file. Okay, we're back here. I'm gonna step in and do a thorough sweep with the thermal. And Ernie, you may want to have your camera on for this. Whoa, wait a minute. What you got? I'm not sure. Are you kidding me? What? Ernie, we were just up here with Layla. I, do you remember seeing this at all? Because I sure as hell don't. Yes. Is that a dead rat? Not just a dead rat, that's a dead rat that was dinner for something. That couldn't have been here earlier, we definitely would have seen it. I know, right? And the floor's showing that it's still warm, so whatever attacked this did this recently. It's gotta be a cat or something roaming around. Yeah, that would explain all the dead rodents. What in the world made that noise? It was like a metallic sound. Not even sure which direction that came from. Maybe it was Jared and Ernie? Melanie to Jared, come in. Go ahead. We just heard a loud metallic noise down here. Was that you guys? Over. Negative. 
Weirded it too. We thought it might have been you. I was just about to check in and see, but uh, you beat me to it. Over. Okay, we're gonna try to locate the source. Over. Alright, be aware there's rodents roaming around. Keep your eyes open for a possible stray animal in the building. Ernie and I just found a chewed up mouse. Over. Okay, be careful. Over and out. Please confirm no one's over in the guest area. Over. Nope. Ernie and I are still upstairs in the mail ward. Over. Negative, Terry. Me and I are in the lower female ward. Over. That's very strange because I just saw something in the guest quarter camera freeze. Then it started shaking and now it seems like the camera's fallen over on its side. Well, Terry, seeing as how you're the closest and most available to that side of the building, why don't you go check it out? Over. All right, I'll go take a look at it. What I'm wondering is, maybe that noise came from the file room. And maybe it was the file cabinet falling over. It's possible. That was weird as hell. You know what? That must have been one of the guys messing with you. Probably Jared. Guys, stop playing over the radios. Damn it, Mel. Hey, calm down. No one's playing over the radios. Guys, I think I'm lost. Terry, where exactly are you? Terry, just find the kitchen and you're back in the entrance of the building. Guys, I'm hearing shit like a growl. A growl like an animal? Terry, we don't know what kind of animal may be roaming around here. Look, man, I ain't fucking around with any wild animals and shit. Terry, I hope to God you're getting all this on your glasses. sure that the file cabinet room was here. I don't remember ever seeing one. We're not gonna make it. Battery's low. Shouldn't be. I know it took a full charge. Okay. Let's go back. It's weird because it's not like I sensed a presence. But something is seriously bugging me the hell out. Maybe there was a loose vent cover in one of the rooms that was swinging around? No, I don't think so. I mean, that noise was really loud. Hey, guys. Any findings? Damn it, Jared! What? No. No, nothing interesting, just that noise that we heard. Yeah. Ernie and I found some half-eaten rat parts. Might be nothing, but it does reiterate the most popular claim about this place. And the thing is, where we found them were places we all toured earlier today. We definitely would have noticed if they were there before. Yeah, these were left there by something. Can I see the footage? There has to be a pack of animals or somewhere nesting inside the building. We need to debunk this particular claim, so when Wait. we do- Wait. Where's Terry? Jared to Terry, what's your status? Over. What the fuck, Terry? Over. Terry!
Terry, you better not be fucking around. I'm gonna kick your fucking ass if you fucking scare me. Over. Terry? Terry? You gotta be freaking kidding me. Damn batteries, one third. The camera just showed me full bars. Oh my god. Looks like blood. Shit, Nate. T Terry? Terry? the death of me. I am halfway through the first floor and no sign of Terry. No sign of anything for that matter. Touching it. Shit, Mel. No. Don't even think of asking me. One of us has to pull that thing out of there so we can see what it is. Please. All right. I'll do it for you. But I'm not touching it with my hands. Looks like Terry's skin. God damn, Melanie! Why would a piece of me be lying here? It can't be Terry's. Who the hell would? Wait. Wait, wait. Wait just one goddamn minute. I think I know what's going on here. It's Jared. What do you mean it's Jared? He staged all this. What the hell are you doing? Relax, it's just a prop. A prop? But that looks real. 
But why? Why? Why would Jared do this? Don't know. Maybe he's desperate, taking extra precautions to make sure we walk out of here with some type of evidence. Maybe he thought this would guarantee putting it over the top since Investigation 12 was a total failure. We can't blame Investigation 12 entirely on Jared. I mean, you know him. He wouldn't do this. Come on, Mel. He has to make sure things are perfect. Bloggers covering our investigation has pressured him even more. He's desperate for things to come out right, but... But this... This is too perfect. I will say whoever he got to do this did a fantastic job. It seriously looks and feels real. I guess the positive comments from the committee did boost his ego a little. Look, I think we need to confront him about this as soon as possible before it jeopardizes the entire investigation. This is Ernie. Confirm that no one's messing around in the mole man's cell. Over. Nate and I are still on the first floor. Over. Terry, is that you in the mole man's cell? Over. You're closer. Go get him and tell him to stop playing games. I just saw him on the screen. Why isn't he answering his walkie? He must have lost his walkie-talkie. He might not even know that we're looking for him. All right. Over. So, what do you think we should do if Jared actually cops up to this? I don't know. I mean, what can we do? His ego is the problem here. We shouldn't put our names on any of these investigations if there's going to be goddamn stunts and secret agendas. But my concern is, is that he's going to present these tainted facts with our names attached. Harry? Please be you. Oh, great. I can't believe we seriously thought Terry was dead. Guys. What the hell happened to you? And why haven't you been checking in? I'm sorry, I lost my walkie-talkie somewhere along the way. Well, isn't that convenient? Is that supposed to mean something? I'm sorry, okay? I'll find it later. I was in a rush to get back here. Something seriously fucked up happened. What do you mean something seriously fucked up happened? I was looking for Terry at the back end of the hallway in the guest corridor. I saw someone hunched over and I called out to him and he stood up. It was like a homeless guy ready to attack me, and lights went out and- Come on, really? What makes you so sure it wasn't just Terry Punk in your ass? No way, this guy was much taller and completely malnourished, okay? Look, just let me connect. All right, I'm just gonna come out and ask. Jared, did you purposely stage any props in the building for us to find tonight? Props? Are you for real right now? No. Come on, man! We found the fake blood you had all over the floor in the kitchen! 
but you just flat out went way overboard with that whole bloody piece of meat. What the fuck are you even talking about? Of course I didn't stage any goddamn props, and how dare you even accuse me of some shit like that? I would never resort to any scare tactics or gimmicks or any special effects to enhance any of our investigations. Do you really think I'd be that dumb? Bro, because you want to make sure this investigation doesn't turn into another 12. I've seen this movie before, and I know how it ends. It's 12 all over again! So why the fuck do I want the same for 13? Okay. So, if it wasn't you, then that leaves Terry. Or Ernie? I told you. Neither of those guys are organized enough to try and pull off something like that. Okay, then who else could it be, Nate? Look, I don't know who the fuck it was, okay? It could be a homeless guy that's been squatting here for all I know. Guys. What are the possibilities Parrish is doing this? No way. This was a man. Let me just show you the footage so you can see for yourself. Holy shit, I'm so glad to see you guys. Ernie, what happened? I heard a noise in the hallway, and I thought it was Terry, so I went to the moment's cell, and I found the camera completely destroyed. I mean, someone smashed the shit out of it. What the fuck, Ernie? It was already like this when I found it. Now, once I find out who's responsible for this, I'm gonna beat the living shit out of him. And that's when I came straight back here. This has to be Terry, right? I mean, unless someone here isn't telling the truth. What are you talking about? We found a prop and some fake blood planted in this building. And Jared claims that he saw somebody else here inside with us. Look, fuck all you guys. This whole investigation is turning into a flaming pile of dog shit. Terry's MIA and we got some homeless guy running around destroying our equipment. You guys are accusing me of this shit? Well, fuck that. We're finding Terry, we're getting out of here, and we're boarding this investigation. This is the most important investigation yet. We don't have enough to show the board. Okay, then I suggest that we go find Terry and we get some answers. Damn straight, we're doing this in groups. Ernie and I will go find Terry. You guys stay behind and watch the monitors. Okay, but why don't we go with you? Because it'll speed things up. No, I want a team staying here reporting any sightings of Terry or anybody or anything walking around this place. Ernie and I are gonna start on the top floor and work our way down and sweep every goddamn inch of this place. And if Terry comes back, notify me immediately. Ernie, grab another camera. Whatever's happening here, I want it documented. If this turns into some potential legal matter, I want evidence to sue that old hag Parrish. Ernie, let's go. Kid, things are slowing up. Good time to take five. Got a light? So, what's your story? I d don't have one. I see how you look at me from that kitchen. You think you're in some secret place, watching from afar, but I see you. Tell you what, there's that new Tarzan movie playing at the Palladium tomorrow. Let's see if we can get that shyness out of you in the dark. I said five minutes, now that get back to work. I can't wait. Are you all right? Yeah. Leonard, uh, what's wrong? These kids are messing with me. Hey, sit down! Don't mind them, just, just watch the movie. Father, please. 
please, not now. Boy, don't make me come in and doubt you now. Open up. Please, please, father. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. You close the door real quiet. that homeless guy wasn't the mole man. No, dude, he was real, not ghost-like. I thought you said spirits can manifest in different forms, though. Ernie, if he was the mole man, wouldn't he have killed me right on the spot? I think we went down this way already. No, nah, we haven't gone this way yet. Okay, wait up. Think Gerald was being honest? I don't know. I mean, if he's lying, then he's pretty damn convincing. I'm just having a hard time buying a story. Yeah, but Nate, I mean, he makes a point. This whole building has been vacant for years. It's completely plausible that maybe a homeless person broke in and is living inside here. And if that's the case, maybe he just thinks we're trespassing and he's pissed off, trashing all our shit. How the hell's a homeless dude gonna have access to any props or makeup effects? Terry? I swear to God, if he doesn't have a good damn reason for being gone, I'm gonna fire his ass on the spot and he can walk home. Jared. No way, dude. What the fuck? What are they looking at? Another dead rat? Oh, oh shit! That is a real finger, man. I'm not fucking kidding. No fucking way. Are you serious? Yeah, I swear to God. I can see the bone and the veins sticking out of it, man. There's fucking bite marks all over it. Jared, what exactly are you guys looking at? Um, we just found a severed finger on the floor. Jared's 100% it's real. Not the flop. Ernie, swear on your mother's grave that you're not trying to fuck with us. Yes, I fucking swear, Melanie. It looks like something hit it off. We're both like spazzing the fuck out right now just looking at it. Fuck! 
We're stuck here. We're stuck here until Layla lets us out. Ernie? What is that? There's blood on the floor here leading off down the stairwell. Alright. I'll tell you all right fucking now, when we find out who's responsible for conspiring this whole prank, I am personally gonna beat their sorry ass like there's no goddamn tomorrow. Believe that. Don't you get it, Nate? Nobody's fucking around here. This isn't a prank anymore. This is real and Terry can be in some serious trouble and we need to find him. Didn't you hear Jared? He wouldn't sabotage Investigation 13. Because, Mel, there's no more time. He has to get this right or it's his reputation on the line. That doesn't make any sense. The Jared that I know wouldn't Listen, even- Listen, Mel. I think you're blinded by the fact that you still got a thing for him. But you need to open your eyes. Look, I admit that I was skeptical at first, but the reality is is that Terry's in serious trouble and I don't know if it's a wild animal or even the mole man. Terry's losing blood by the second and he needs our help. Look, I'm trying really hard to see both sides of the coin here and it's tough, believe me, but I could really use your help. I don't know about this, Jared. Are you okay? Jared, man, this is seriously fucked! We need to get out of here right now! Screw Terry! I'm shitting my pants right now! Ernie, we need to find Terry before he freaking bleeds to death. I don't like that idea. We need to get out of here and get help to find Terry. Ernie, if it was you that was missing, we'll do the exact same thing. I'll keep it together. Respond, please. 
Lawrence, Sheridan, Ernie are... <laughs> Sit! Investigation. Electroconvulsive number one. Patient is being prescribed this regimen to modify his behavior. Treatment of 150 volts. Attempt number 27, 250 volts. Attempt number 78, 325. 500 volts. The only regimen to subdue patient. Continue treatment at maximum levels. <gasps> Dear God. Therapy on Leonard Craven. Oh my God. It's her. Can I get out of here? You promise? Yes, well, come on. But I have info Later, about- we need to get to the boiler room. But it's about Paris! Not now! Bernie's in trouble! The blood trail runs all the way through here. Right up to the coal storage from where they saw that thing. Doesn't look like it's broken. Play, play the latest file. Play the file. Ernie! 
shaft that Brian Reznor used to sneak in. It's too high, we can't get to it. Damn it! 
Mr. Craven. Please! Please, no shock! I'm not going to shock you, sweetie. That treatment is barbaric. It's ineffective. What are you going to do to me, then? Are you familiar with the ways of the shaman? They're known as healers, able to communicate with the spirit realm in other dimensions. I've traveled the world and learned of their ways, and I'm here to free you. From what? The evil that is deep inside you. I know you're not evil, Leonard. You want me to help you, Leonard? Very well. Let's begin.
Looks like he's got away. Inform the others. I know you're still here, Leonard. Cannot catch a dream. Cannot catch a dream. Come on, come on, come on. Hey, yeah, yeah. If I can't keep the evil out of you, Leonard, then I have no choice but to keep you in here for good.